Hello, I'm TRHR, and I'm going to show you how to beat BitBurner. So the first thing to do is create a script. And in the script, we're going to put, uh, let's keep it simple. We're going to hack food and stuff. So, food and stuff has not been rooted yet. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to connect. We'll automate all this in, in just a minute. We're going to run nuke. We've gained root access. Now we can run scripts against it. Got to await a promise. When it says that, what it means is you got to come in here and put an await in front of the command. Did anything happen? Let's find out. Looks like it's executing and it'll be done in 51.4 seconds. What we'll see is our money go up in just a few seconds. Okay. So uh, it failed to act food and stuff. That's understandable. We're level one and it's got some security on it. But you'll notice here the script finished running. Um, not a big deal. So we're going to let that run again. But in the meantime, I want to try to make this a little bit better. Since we don't want to execute, uh, go.js every time. I'm going to wrap this in a loop. And that way it'll run consistently. And uh, you notice that the, uh, the last hack failed because it's got some security. So let's throw in a weekend too. Now, I'm not going to sit here and wait for all this to execute. You guys can figure out what this stuff does. Um, but what I am going to do is get started on figuring out when we should weaken, when we should act, when we should grow. And that's uh, it's actually pretty simple. So the logic that I'm going to use is I'm going to code a program that weakens a target when that target can be weakened, specifically when the security level of the target is higher than the minimum, then it's gonna grow the target uh, when the amount of money on the target is less than the maximum, then it's gonna hack the target for some percentage of the target's money. And I may save that last one for a future iteration. Uh, but how do we do that? So first thing we said was weaken the target while Security, greater than then security. Throw target while money is less than max money. Right? That's the pseudocode. So to implement the first line, we want to do if something. And it's weak. Then for the second line, we want to do if something. And then at the end, we want to hack. So what are these if statements? Uh, ifs are conditionals that essentially when the statement inside the parentheses evaluates to true, it'll execute that command. So the thing we want to uh, evaluate to true is, is the security greater than the min security? We can get that with get server security level which takes a parameter called host. 
And then we want to com compare that to bin security level. I'm just going to minimize that for a minute. All right, so if git server security level is greater than in a git server min security level, we're going to weaken. Then for the second one, if the money is less than max money. So ns dot git server max money. Well, there we go, I get server money available. So what do we got now? If the server security level is greater than the minimum security level, we want to weaken it. That's exactly what we wanted to do. And then while the money is less than max money, that's your current money and that's your max money, we're going to grow it. And otherwise we're going to hack it. Done. Save. I guess I'll just kill this and run it again. You'll notice here that it returned get server security level, which is 10, and get server min security level, which is three. So we know that server security level is greater than min security, 10 is greater than three. So it's gonna execute that weakened command. And I think you, you can just trust me that the rest of this is gonna go exactly the way we want it to go. Make this a little bit um, more resilient. If we were to do it like this, What that has the uh, the benefit of doing is it'll only run one of these commands in a loop. So if the security level is greater than in security, it'll run weaken, and then it won't run anything else. So it won't run hack directly after that. It'll go back to the top and it'll check all these conditions again. Um, and this is your standard uh, weak grow hack loop, your basic bare bones hack script. But this is only attacking one target, food and stuff. So that's not good. We want to attack any legal target, I believe. To do that, we probably want to define some kind of a function to get the name of the server. And there's a couple of ways we could do that. Uh, way one is we could be like, let servers equal, and then just type them out, right? Home, food and stuff. Sigma, those guns, and so on. That's a lot of work. Um, so what I would prefer to do here is get the server list via a function. I'm going to define a function. I'm going to call it dp list. I'm going to pass the dp list the ns variable. And then I'm going to have to pass current, and I'm going to give that a default of home. And then I'm going to need some kind of a storage structure. So it could either be a set, a map, or a list. Those are all data storage structures in JavaScript. Here I'm going to use set. I'm going to set that as a default of new set. And the first thing we're going to do is since this is a recursive function, uh, we're going to base everything around what the value of current is. Um, and so that ought to work. We're going to get the list of connections to the current server. And the default, first time through the loop, that's home. NS scan returns a list of connected servers. Then we got to figure out which servers are connected to the servers that are connected to home, right? So as it is now, this will give us just home, but those servers also have servers connected to them. And I don't really expect you to understand this. Probably just want to copy and paste it. Uh, for each of the connections that 
are not in the set. We're going to add it to the set. And then we're going to scan by running the function again, this the recursively, uh, essentially calling itself. We're going to return that back. And so what this is going to do on every iteration, it's going to scan the servers connected to the current server, then go to all those servers, scan them, and fill up this new set, set equals new set variable which I'm just calling set. It's going to fill this up as it goes. By the end of this next for each, we will literally have a set containing all of the servers connected to any server, which is by definition every server. And so we're going to return that. And that's how we do that. We're just going to take the keys of the set, which is you don't need to know how to do this. Take the keys, create an array from it, and return it. This means this function returns an array of servers dynamically. Now we can call that function just by doing dp list and s. And it'll start with home and an empty set. And on the first time through, It'll send something like Joe's guns back up. Joe's guns will become current and the set will be home and Joe's guns because they'll be added to it. I don't want to spend a ton of time explaining that. But here we've got an, uh, a list of servers. And with that list, we can do stuff like uh, Something like that, which would go through the list and print out the text, currently considering server. We'll execute that just to see what happens. Probably gonna have to kill it. Look at that. Literally a list of every server in the game. Four lines of code, done. So what do we wanna do with this list? Well, we wanna iterate through the entire server list and use up all of the server's RAM attacking something, right? So let's start by shifting this down into the while loop because we want to do this over and over and over. We're going to move that down because we're not going to use it right now. Probably take out this T print line. So while true, so this will repeat forever, we're going to consider every server in that list. And then we're going to do a. Um, first, we got to check if we got admin on the server. Well, yeah, we'll start with that. And that's, uh, I think it's has root access. Yeah. So this is if we're an admin on the server, we can do stuff else. We can do other, other stuff. Um, so the else, maybe this would be a good place to put in, can we get root access? Remember we said earlier we're going to automatically go and try to get root access to anything we haven't already rooted. Um, this might be a good place to do that. So what servers can we root? Um, in the game, you can root any server where you can open all of the ports to it. That's it. That's the requirement. Every server has a different uh, number of required ports, so we need to get that value. Let's start with some pseudocode. Right, so we're gonna open all the possible ports, then we're gonna attempt to nuke the server. Now there's two ways you can do this, or three ways you can do this. What a lot of people do is if ns dot get server open ports something or else you know something like that and if that's less than ns get server required that makes sense right I, I do it a different way I do try catch what try and catch do is they prevent the statements 
from throwing an error and like shutting down your script. So what are we going to try to do? We're going to try to root uh, SSH the target. We're going to try to FP crack the target. We're going to try to relay. We're going to try the worm. Then we're going to try SQL inject. And if we fail to do that, which we will often, it's not going to do anything. We don't care. We're just going to swallow that. Uh, so that'll attempt to open all the possible ports we can. And if we don't have the software, who cares? It's in a try block. It'll just fail. And if the server has already been rooted, it won't even be in this part of the uh, statement. It won't even hit the else because if we have root access, it'll be, everything will be happening up here. And if for some other reason it fails to execute brute, or, uh, brute SSH or FTP crack or whatever, no big deal. It's in a try block. Uh, then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to try and we're going to catch nuke. So this will do exactly the same thing. If it's going to try to nuke the server, if it can't because there's not enough ports are open or for any other reason, it just fails, this won't throw any errors. It'll just continue on and it's going to try this constantly like every two or three minutes and go back and attempt to do this again so we're good we're going to be opening every port on every server that we can every two minutes gaining root access to that server at which point that server will uh, obey the commands in this block because we will then have root access and what commands do we want to use well i would say first we want to say and pseudocode uh, divert all of this server's divert all the threads to the most valuable command so like whether that's we can grow or hack we want to do that with all of the servers of available threads so how do we determine the most valuable command well we've already done that that's down here that's why I just kind of moved this down So we know the most valuable command is if the server security level is too high, it's going to be to weaken. If the money is too low, it's going to be to grow. And then if not, it's just going to be to hack. That's the most valuable command. Uh, but we don't want to fixate on food and stuff. So we'll probably just uh, find and replace this with server, which is our variable. And there's one other part to this pseudocode, which is divert all of this server's available threads to the most valuable command. Um, how would we do that? Well, first we got to know how many threads are available on the server, which is going to be function. Function thread count. And the things we'll need to pass into thread count are the server host name, let's call that host name, and the script RAM. Then we're going to return from this function a variable called threads. Right? Now, somehow we've got to convert host name and script RAM into a number of threads that represents the server's total uh, capacity. And we know that threads is going to be equal to free RAM over script RAM, right? Because we want to return a value that is equal to how much RAM we've got left over the value we're passing in, which is the size of the script we're trying to execute either we can grow or hack. But then how do we get this free RAM variable? And I find this is useful a lot of times to kind of code backwards to know what you're trying to get out of it and then create variables as you go along. Free RAM is going to be equal to, well, let's see what functions we've got. We've got get server max RAM.
which takes a parameter of the host name. And then we've got the server used RAM. And free RAM is equal to max RAM over, sorry, max RAM minus used RAM. And we're probably done here. So we're taking the max RAM, subtracting the used RAM, and then dividing that over the script RAM, flooring that, which returns an integer, uh, because th you can't have a half a thread or one and a half threads. Um, this will return a whole number. That's what math floor does. And uh, okay, so we've got that. Divert all of the server's available threads. So how about what available threads equal thread count? S server. And then what is script RAM? Well, script RAM is a value that tells us how much RAM it's going to take to run these we can grow and hack uh, commands. But that by itself doesn't make any sense because they're just in the script. Ah, you see, when you run this um, one script at home, this would always be weakening, weaken, weakening, growing, and hacking from home. We're going to have to have some way to make it weaken, hack, and grow from the server that we're trying to utilize. The way we're going to do that is by pulling these commands out entirely and doing ns exec, which takes parameters of the script, which I'm just going to call bin weak js, the server that's running the script, which is server, the number of threads, which is available threads, we've just defined that. And then that's a good start. We're going to do the same thing for grow. We're going to do the same thing for hack. And this will do exactly what we set out to do. Now we need to finish this function available threads by knowing what the RAM is of bin, weak, grow, and hack. So I'm going to go on and create those scripts. Uh-oh, we need a host. We need to know who we're weakening. So we're going to have to pass something into this script, a parameter. Do that with nsargs. And now we're good to go. We can save this. Note the RAM is 1.75 gigabytes. Copy this over to grow. RAM is again 1.75. Ah, but hack it's 1.7. So we'll keep that in mind as we go back up to our main script. So available threads is actually different. So we can't put let available threads outside of these blocks. Uh, we're going to need three copies of this. It's going to need to go inside of the if blocks. And we said the available, oh sorry, the required RAM is 1.7 for hack, 1.75 for grow, 1.75 for weak. We also, if you'll recall, put in that nsargs, which is a, a, a parameter that we're passing to the script. That parameter is going to be target, which is, well, it's not server. A server is the current server. It's going to be target. Now we haven't defined target. Also, this red box here, pay attention to that. That means you need to uh, await something. Or else you'll just loop forever and ever and ever. Okay, so how are we going to get target? Well, I think for now, we'll just say target is Joe's guns. Now let's do food and stuff. I don't want to deal with, well, we haven't actually rooted Joe's guns yet. 
Now that you'll see the script has been running in the background, our previous version, it's weakened food and stuff from 10 to 9.8 because it's running with one thread. Let's kill that and run the new version and fingers crossed it actually compiles. Uh, hack tried to run hack. Ah, so you forgot to wait a promise. That universally means, oh God, kill, 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 kill. There we go. You'll do this a lot. NS hack has to have an await. So it does grow. All of these uh, kind of time delimited functions, anything that takes time in this game, like hack and grow and weak and backdoor and they all have to be awaited. Every one of them. You'll know if something needs to be awaited when you type NS weaken and hit your uh, parentheses, it'll pop up this, uh, this signature and it says it returns a promise. If it returns a promise here, it needs an await or else you'll get that message about unhandled promise. And now, uh-oh, invalid thread count must be numeric and greater than zero is zero. That's happening on line 44 of main. So let's take a look at line 44 of main. So apparently, at some point, we're sending zero in as available threads, which makes sense. We're never checking to make sure we have one thread or more. We're just saying, give me the number of threads, and this could be zero. Our free RAM is half a gig and the script RAM is a gig and a half. This is going to uh, round down to zero, which is illegal. So we just got to surround this with an if statement. If it's greater than or equal to one, we can do it. Otherwise, the server is just kind of already at max capacity and we won't do anything. Okay, no crashes. It's okay. Let's send in all these messages. You don't have enough ports to use nuke. You don't have enough, you don't have the brute SSH. Not a big deal. That's just the uh, the try block that we put around the um, the brute SSH and nukes, just telling us that we're trying to do something we can't do. But if we hit scan, you'll notice that we now have root on noodles, food and stuff, Sigma, Joe's guns, Hong Fong, and Harakiri, which seems to be working exactly like we want it to work. Take a look at our overview. We're at hack level three and we've got $16,000. It looks like we're running hack with um, two threads, which is all we've got. And it's, uh, it's running on a loop, which we decided we want to do when we came over here into bin hack and we said, well, true, let's hack the target. Um, that may not be the best way to do this. Sometimes you'll want to do that where you just say, I'm going to send these scripts out and it's just going to continuously loop this command. But in fact, in our logic script, we're saying loop this entire script and then decide what the best, most valuable command is to use. So maybe just doing a while true is not the best thing to do. What about let repeat equals ns args one? And then we'll do while repeat. We'll just copy this to hack and grow and all of them. So now we'll need to pass another arg in. Uh, this will be a repeat arg. If we want to repeat, we'll need to pass a true like value here. In fact, we don't want to repeat, so we don't have to pass anything. I'm going to kill these scripts and run it again. And we'll see if our behavior changes. Oh, 
think there may be a bug in here that I just mistyped. So we're looping through the servers. If we have root access to the server, we're checking the server's available threads. Ah, this is the problem. This should really be the target's security level, not the servers. The target's money. Well, I sort of expected that to do something. So I'm going to move this up into there. That's not the bug, but it makes me feel a little bit better to have that weight. this part's working perfectly because we're getting um, root access on servers we don't have. Ah, we also need to make sure we have root access on the target. If that didn't fix it, I'm going to start printing out some debug values. Sorry, I'm, I usually don't play this on Firefox. It's just for recording. Oh, you know what the problem is? This uh, sleep is scrolling so fast I couldn't see it. The problem is we have, it's trying to exec, uh, execute these binary files on the server, but those files aren't on the server. They're on home. So we need to get those files to the server. And the easiest way to do that, I'm just gonna make another loop at the top here. Same as below, I'm gonna SCP the files I need, which are gonna be bin week JS and hack.js and then road.js from home to server. Right, and that way, before we even start the loop, we'll copy all those files over. Let's see if that's better. First, we'll see if the files are copied over. Yep, those are the files. So it could be any number of problems. Um, first, I'm going to print out. Or, well, first, I'm going to kill the. I'm going to disable the logs because I can't do anything with all this spam. Gonna disable all logs, I'll create my own. Oh, see, it's trying to do something ex executing bin week on noodles with two threads and args food and stuff. That's good. Oh, you know what it is? It's this. I was a little bit sloppy in my while repeat. Um, so, repeat is by default false because there's nothing being passed to it. And a while says, while true, execute grow. But this is never true. So we can't actually do a while loop here. We have to do a, a do while loop. And do that, we just reverse this and say, do grow while repeat. That way it'll always run once. That's what a do while loop does. It, it goes through and it says, okay, I'm gonna do this. And then if this is true, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to keep looping. So that will fix the uh, problem with stuff not executing. 
just do while. And since we put that uh, code at the top of our script to automatically copy these files over every time we run it, that'll automatically go to the servers. And there we have it. We're now executing the most valuable script at the total available thread count against our target food and stuff. And that's happening on every server we have admin to. So we're at 40 minutes now. I think we'll probably call it for this episode. I don't know if there'll be another one. We'll uh, see how I feel. Uh, but for now, we'll we'll leave you with that. You've got a script that deploys the most uh, the most valuable command to every server you've got, which will get you a long way in this game. All right. Thanks for watching.